pessoal do Nós Nerds, tudo bom? Aqui é o Cris Eba, estou trazendo para vocês mais uma entrevista internacional, desta vez com o David Chan, que você provavelmente nunca ouviu falar, da Honor Code, que você também não deve ter ouvido falar, mas eles trouxeram para vocês o Narcoses, que você deve ter ouvido falar, principalmente se você assiste aqui o canal. É, eles fizeram aquele jogo submarino, né, que se passa embaixo d'água, até fiz uma live disso com... com roupa de mergulho e tudo, super caracterizado, onde você está aí é, num laboratório submarino que sofre um acidente e, e você tem que escapar dessa situação. É, é um jogo em primeira pessoa, ele é tipo um FPX, assim, experiência, ele tem uns elementos de plataforma, uns puzzlezinhos, assim, mas o foco dele é a história, que é sensacional. É, o David, com quem eu conversei, ele é o cara que, que participou do roteiro, foi um dos caras que escreveu o roteiro do jogo, é, ele contou um pouco do jogo, do desenvolvimento, como que eles fizeram, é, um pouco da história de vida dele, aí como sempre aquele papo bem descontraído. A entrevista é em inglês, com legendas, é, créditos do Google Translator em português para vocês. É, espero que vocês aproveitam. aproveitem. Se vocês jogaram o jogo, por favor, deixe o um comentário aqui, porque foi assim, boa parte da entrevista foi uma babação de ovo minha em cima do jogo, que eu achei sensacional, para mim é um dos melhores jogos do ano disparado pela história, é, que mais? É, bom, como sempre, né? Deixe o seu like, inscreva-se no canal. Eu tenho que falar isso, eu sou obrigado. Então, mas você já sabe o que fazer isso, você já fizeram melhor ainda, entendeu? Fica dado o recado. Falou, galera, aproveitem, brigadão e até a próxima. Um abraço, tchau, tchau. Hi everyone from Those Nerds, it's me Chris again. I'm here with David Chan from uh, Honor Code. He is the writer responsible for that amazing underwater game called Narcosis. Hi David, how are you? Hi there Chris, good to speak to you. Great, well th thanks for having us and congratulations. First of all, congratulations to you and everybody involved in this amazing game. Uh, usually uh, we start with, with other subjects and I'll ask about your background, but I, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about the game. So I just want to go directly and, and, and talk about it. <laughs> that's, that's cool. That's really nice to hear that. What, uh, what, what, what is it that you found to be so, so enjoyable? Well, first of all, I have, I have a very peculiar taste in games. I play everything that has underwater and that has rollerblades involved. Okay. For, Because because I, I rollerblade and I'm a scuba diver, and right. and, and you don't Those see many don't games. Together. Yeah, <laughs> they don't go together. But you and you don't see many games regarding. I mean, rollerblading. I have a few, and underwater. I mean, both these subjects are very little explored in games. I mean, we don't see that every day. Right. From, from the top of my head, I can remember Narcosis. I know uh, Abzu. Yeah. which are from completely different sides of the spectrum if you take the games and yeah. i don't know any others that i can remember by heart i mean i know very old arcade games where you would do underwater but they're not like shooting i mean but what you guys did and and as i said I, i'm a scuba diver i almost became a, a diving instructor What really attracted me in this game, besides the story, is, is the ambience that you guys were able to create. And, and my first question is, how many people involved in the team actually dive? Um, that's a good question to start with. Uh, there's one of our, our, our principal game designer, Damian, uh, is, uh, dives, I think, semi-regularly. Um, and I have in the past, but I certainly wouldn't call myself a diver. But I think that's the, we two are the only ones who have experience of scuba diving, per se. Really? I, I think everyone's been in the water once or twice, but... You know. I, I'm, amaz I'm amazed with this answer, because I, I thought you guys would say everybody. Cause, right, I no, mean, not, not at all. I mean, what you, well then, congratulations, because what you managed to do in, in that game, that whole uh, ambience, the, the feeling about being underwater, it was, was out of this world, I mean... Uh, by diving, you know, you've been a little bit of scuba diving, you, you know that it, it's it's an amazing place to be, but it's sort of also oppressive because, I mean, everything around you can kill you and, and you're not in your own ambient and you can't breathe if you yeah. don't have the yeah. gear. I mean, you're, you're literally thrusting yourself into a, a, a very unnatural situation. Right? So, and, and then I think the idea that, um, that we were, we were 
fortunate to be able to pull off was just the idea of the this very limited view and perspective into the world, right? Um, there's something, I mean, as you know, there's something different about um, looking to see what's behind you when you're underwater in the dark or, you know, with no with no artificial light, you know, than just turning your shoulder on, on a city street. So. Yeah, this was amazing because the suit that the player has in the game, it's it's a hard suit, so you, you just can't turn your neck. If you turn your neck, you just see the side of this, of the, that, the, how do you call the gear, the diving suits. Dive suit, yeah. Yeah. So... And how how actually how did you guys start with the idea? Did you get together and say let's do an underwater game or let's do a survival horror? Because the game is is like a f how would you call it? It's like survival horror, first person experience. Uh... We call it. We tend to call it survival story. Okay. Uh, you know, we tried very hard not to label it explicitly as a horror game uh, because that carries a lot of different connotations that that we learned a lot of. Survival. Not stereotypes, but you know a lot of sort of genre uh, things mm -hmm. that we tried to avoid. Um, but and also because I think the, one of the main distinctions for us is that unlike most, if not all, horror games, um, you know we don't really get into sort of supernatural aspects, mm -hmm. and we don't really get into moral moral issues, right? Okay. So you know there's no uh, you know there's sort of no Cthulhu-like entities, and there's no sort of zombie outbreak. There's no rogue AIs, and you know there's not even an evil killer, you know, on loose, right? You're really just you're really just fighting against Mother Nature and sort of your own uh, very tenuous sense of sanity, yeah. and um, that was you know that was an important distinction for us to make because you know we really feel like that helps put the game in fairly unique territory. You know? Yeah, this, this is I would say unique is a very good word to describe it because as you said it's. It's you against Mother Nature and against yourself in the game because it's yeah. the whole. We don't want to go into spoilers, but there's some conflict that the the main player has, and and because it's a very drastic situation. I mean, yeah, it's an extreme is, situation, and it's, it's an extreme situation, but it's it's a, a plausible situation, right? I mean, I think that was the thing. It's like <laughs> yeah. most people are not going to end up in a situation like this, but there are people whose whose daily lives or, or work involve situations like this, right? So it's it's something you can imagine, as opposed mm -hmm. to uh, you know, once again, as, as uh, uh, you know, opening a, a a book with ancient curses that unleashes a demon, you know, <laughs> backwoods of some you know town or something like that. Um, and then really, like you know, you were talking about the suit earlier. I think one of the things that was important for us was like. You're trapped inside of this suit, and it's keeping you alive. And really, you're, you know, the only thing you have to keep you company are your own thoughts, right? And then outside of the suit is literally the entire ocean. You know, so the mother nature is all all around you, and and for you know uh, miles, all you know hundreds of thousands of miles all around you, and then you know you're trapped inside this little suit. Five, uh, five kilometers below water, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and it's and not so, it's know. not just like swi swim up yeah. and hope for the yeah. best. <laughs> yeah. it's funny. We, we we did get a lot of comments like that. They're like, "Why can't she swim up?" I mean, it's not. It's just interesting yeah. that you know people's understanding of sort of what's possible and, and uh, but yeah. No, I mean, I mean, it's as you said. People that understand a little bit of diving know that if you've been at five kilo five thousand meters deep. I mean, the, just the compression to avoid any any uh, nitrogen problems and all of that would take you about two to four weeks in a station to decompress so you can get outside. So it's 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 not just grabbing a jetpack and, and moving up as fast as you can because that will kill you. So yeah. I, I understand that. And and who who came up with the idea? How did you guys pitch it? I mean, how was a little? Bit, I wanted to understand a little bit of the process of of how you guys came with this the whole concept. So so it came about actually prior to when I was involved in the project. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually started. Um, you know, my my, my colleagues, uh, almost all of them met in a game design uh, game development school in France. Mm -hmm. About going on like five years ago now. Okay. And um, Narcosis, or what became Narcosis, was sort of their um, their final student project. Oh, so cool. the game director, game designer, the artist, and one of the engineers, I might be getting this wrong, but, you know, sort of worked on it. Mm -hmm. um, and after they graduated, um, they were all working in sort of game development jobs. Mm -hmm. And they sort of wanted to try to finish this project uh, as a side project. 
and that's about the time that I met them, sort of signed on as the writer. Mm -hmm. But you know, so like I guess what I'm saying is like you know I wasn't around for the initial, the initial okay. conception, but but I know you know the the main things that were really influential were one was there was this game called Bioshock, right, and that had a tremendous effect on so many levels of game development and um, you know it was very inspirational on levels but part of part of what made it so interesting was the setting right mm -hmm. uh, even though most of the game doesn't really involve the ocean per se or you're not really in the water uh, just the just the, the that premise is pretty fascinating right mm -hmm. and the other thing was you know we've been fortunate um, in recent years there's been a real uh, there's been a real sort of uh, growth in independent horror games, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of developers are, were sort of frustrated by the fact that a lot of larger companies were not really um, tapping into that. Yeah. And so then you start to see these really sort of fresh and original and sort of, I guess, leaner takes on, on horror games. You know, obviously the yes. um, Amnesia is tremendously influential there. Yes. So I think those are sort of the two, Okay. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, com combining sort of history very, mm -hmm. very briefly. Like, um, and though I, I know sort of the, the basic idea was originally was set a game underwater. Um, and I think the very, very original concept was more like a resource exploration kind of project, like mm -hmm. almost like No Man's Sky or something like that. You travel around, or maybe what's the right? I, I'm you know? sorry, I, I, I just hate those survival games and that you just have to, to mindlessly or, resources. or yeah. for resources and, and the whole objective is to, to stay alive and... Uh, I have a motto for myself in gaming is that if, if the game doesn't have an end, I don't start playing it. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, I get it. I, get it. I mean, also, as you get older, right, I mean, you, you don't have the sort of time to, to invest in that sort of thing. So No, I have a one-year-old kid. I mean, I, if, if I'm lucky, I get five, six hours of video games a week. Right. <laughs> Some kids have that a but day. You should try being a game developer. Yeah. You, know, you, don't, <laughs> you get to play one game for two years at a time. Yeah. Uh, uh, so anyway, you know that was that was a very sort of original concept, um, and then I think eventually it sort of became, you know, more of a, a you know sort of tapping into the sense of like isolation and, and being trapped at the bottom of the ocean. Um, and then when they were sort of looking around, I don't even know they were actually actively looking for a writer, but I was looking to write a game. Mm -hmm. And so we got in touch and uh, we started talking, and you know they had some ideas about a sort of more uh, unusual narrative aspect. To the game, mm -hmm. and that was the thing that really excited me, and, and so that was sort of the part that I, you know, I mean, everyone worked on every aspect of the game, but that was the part I really sort of hopped on because it was really interesting and, and trying cool. to make that happen. Well, th about writing the game, the, the ending of the game is, in my opinion, I mean, very mind blowing. I mean, it, it reminded me of, of amazing movies like like Fight Club or Six Sense. Where you have this, this. That's that's pretty high praise, man. That's awesome. Thanks. But it is. I mean, it it took me like five minutes when the game ended. I was like just looking at the screen at that at that final scene, which I'm not gonna talk here, and I was like, did this really happen? I mean, did I just experience that? Is this for real? I mean, this this was my reaction when the game ended. I mean, I was I was very immersed inside of it. I played alone. I had my headphones. Yeah, uh, for that's the way to do it. For, for the first half of the game, I actually streamed it. I put my scuba gear on, so I had my mask on. Uh, okay, yeah, I saw, I saw that. Yes, yes, oh, you right. Did see it? Yeah, I did see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think I watched the whole thing, but I, I now. Yeah, because because I was playing the game that you know, but but I put yeah. this this blue light on, so I was alone at home, and I, I really tried to immerse into it, and, and it was a really great experience. But but the ending of it is is really. Amazing. I mean, how, how did you guys get to this idea, or, or did it came one day to somebody, or did you discuss a lot of it? No, I mean, I, I think the, the basic the basic idea was always there. Okay. You know, the the specifics and the particulars and exactly how this this ending is is revealed and at what sequence and at what time. You know, all those things were changing constantly. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. We some of those those lines of dialogue. Um, were recorded in the week before the game shipped. Hmm. You know, I mean, we we um, the, the voice acting thing is a whole whole separate thing. But like we, every word in that game, we 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 discussed and polished and you know and reworked over the course of the years. Uh, and and so our voice actor Jeff Mattis, who's you know incredibly hardworking and uh, 
patient, you know, some of those lines got recorded 40, 50 times, and then we would listen to them, and we'd talk about them, and then we'd take one word from this second to sake and like put it back together. Um, and I know this all sounds really abstract to, to people who haven't played the game, but, but I mean, in any case, it's really cool that you find that ending to be so effective. And like, what's been interesting is, you know, I've been fortunate to watch a lot of streamers and a lot of YouTubers play the game, and by and large, you know, almost nobody sees it coming, which we were sort of terrified that everyone was going to figure it out right away. You know? um, but I think more importantly than that, um, you know, you talk about movies like Fight Club or Sixth Sense, um, you wouldn't want somebody to spoil that ending for you in those cases, but at the same time, you know, the, the story, is, it's, it can't just be about the conclusion. The story itself has to have enough merit to, to you know, make exactly. the journey worthwhile. It's not like, oh, if I told you the end of... Um, I don't know if you know this movie, The Crying Game. Do you know The Crying mm -hmm. Game? You know, like, yeah. Oh, I told you the end. Well, now I don't need to watch the movie, right? That's not. That's not it. Yeah. You know, like it's the so, journey, not the destination, right? What's that? It's the journey, not the destination. That yeah, goes, exactly. Right? And like, if you're, you can't hang everything on the fact that there's a twist ending. Um, uh, much like maybe, arguably, you shouldn't hang, you know, horror experience on jump scares, right? The effectiveness of the jump scares, right? There has to be something else going on to make it a meaningful experience. Um, so it's been it's been really cool because like a lot of people I mean a lot of people go in with no information and their minds are blown. A lot of people are like, I know there's a twist coming, I know there's a twist coming, and they still don't see it coming. You can't, you can't. I'm oh, sorry, but you can't see the twist coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean it's like we're really proud of that. And it's funny because you know, we layered all these sort of subtle clues and like there's all these I don't want to even say they're hints, but if you if someone was patient enough to go back and play it again and, and, and listen very carefully and read all the things, you know, they're, 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 there's these clues that we're dropping along the way, like visual clues. There's tons of little secrets yes. and sort of Easter eggs in the, um, in the environments, yes. some that people still haven't found. Um, I, I'm still trying what, to find all the collectibles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's pretty tough. Yeah. But, you know, like, once again, it's like even if you miss all that stuff, you know, hope, or, or if you know going in because you had someone, you, know, you already watched someone stream the game, you know, hopefully, the, once again, the journey is... is meaningful and, and worth experiencing for itself. Yeah. It is. And, and the collectibles is something I wanted to talk about because, I mean, yeah. they're hard to find. I mean, you, yeah. you stumble across a few of them, but most of them are, are sort of hard to find. You have to look for it. And, yeah. well, on the whole game, time is, a very, is, is of the essence because you have limited oxygen. There's yeah. few That's places impressive. where you can go back and, and recharge every time, but usually it's not like where you can freely roam around and explore with all the patients of, of the world. I mean, and, and what I can see, even they are hard to find and, and they, they drop, as you said, a little bit of the clues. I can see you guys put a lot of love into these collectibles because yeah. every, every yeah. single detail, I mean, having actual people photographed for that, I mean, that gave me a an extra spice of scary in the whole thing because when you yeah. see voices and, and, and pictures of, of actual people, that, that brings you more to reality. It's not like a video game. You say, well, this could have happened. And right. Then, that's that's cool. You pick up on that, and there's a couple of things there. It's like um, one is that um, you know we uh, across the whole game we tried to avoid making it feel too much like Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. So there's these twenty people, but you know a lot of them are older or generally physically unattractive or you know not not white people or not American people, you know, and like, so we're trying to like sort of do a, a rainbow coalition of people, but mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, you know, just so people know, it's like, this is basically a science, a research, um, actually it's a mining operation, right? Yeah. You know? And, but what and, you see is it's a multicultural, you have people from different countries and, and, and ethnicities, like and as you mentioned. So it's, it's what you would expect if, if the whole thing was real. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, there's no, yeah, like, there, there's all there's no I mean you know these these are just photos and, and little documents of these people but we did or we spent a lot of time yes yeah, just it's not really necessarily creating their backstories per se but like identifying who they are what their relationships are with one another uh, in a very on a very simple level you know because like when we try to write these we call them relics and um, post mortems right you find sort of information if you discover the body and then you find the corresponding item right it's usually yes. like a personal item. Um, and, and even with the items, we try to be just a little more, a little more um, subtle than like, I don't know, like more more traditional items, you know, or like 
there, a lot of the items and, and the things are not ominous, right? They're supposed to do like real things that people would have or, or you know, yeah. um, right? which is actually hard coming up with 20 items that aren't just a cell phone. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everything now yeah, is like everything. Yeah. Else, I mean, you know, one guy has uh, like a, a vape. Uh, so, yeah. so we can smoke underwater. The other one has like a, a, a bottle, and I think there's a harmonica or, or something like yeah. that. There's African, or, yeah. Okay, so that's a perfect example, right? So yeah, we did the harmonica, but then we want to have another instrument. But once again, we want to think of something just a little more unique. So it's like, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be an instrument he plays. It could be something he bought at a, uh, you know, a flea market in, in another country. Do you know what I mean? Like because that's like real life, right? You know, mm -hmm. or we, we have one character has a flask, but we make a point of saying that he never drinks out of it. You know what I mean? He carries his flask for some other reason. We don't know what the reason is, but just once again, just trying to tell like slightly more interesting or poignant stories, um, mm -hmm. but at the same time, not trying to give you a whole history of who this person is and where they went to school, because like those things aren't really important, and we didn't have the resources to bring mm -hmm. those things to life anyway. But just right? just just a slight brush, so it can bring a little yeah. bit of reality on the stuff, right? Yeah, and and you know, it's 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 tricky because you like you haven't seen all of them, but like. Some of them um, help you understand better about the, the world that they're in, like, you know, those conditions that they you know, the mm -hmm. place where they're working and living. And others are really more personal. They're more of the person who your characters, just, just thoughts about this person. Mm -hmm. And some of them have nothing to do with the, the dead body at all. They're really just the person, like, oh, it's, it's more just, you know, it's free association, like what he's thinking about. And so, okay. like, it's cool that you really enjoyed those. Um, because we definitely, it's, it's just a few words, a few hundred words per character. We tried very, mm -hmm. those things, even even after the game shipped, we went back and modified a few things. We rearranged a couple sentences, you know, just changed okay. a couple of verbs and things like that, just to make it, um, yeah, well, it's just, well, thank you. Thank you for picking up on that. <laughs> so, and who are those people? Are they actors? Are they part of the development team? No, they... no. Um, the, there's, the, one is, uh, one of them is one of our cleaning ladies. Uh, one, there's a, one of our parents is in there. Um, one is uh, actually there's a father and son team, and they're based on friends of mine or people I know. You know, uh, so so ba basically people related to the development team. No, but most of them are actually we went actually most uh, those are the ones who are like related to us. Most of them are actually um, stock photos. Okay. And and you know I had to look through thousands of stock photos to find people who weren't too glamorous looking. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. once again, we we want to avoid people looking too. Yeah. You know? As you said, not not a Hollywood movie, right? Yeah, this is not a Hollywood movie. It's just you know there's, there's plenty of games that do that well and or yeah do that effectively, but um, it's just not the story we're trying to tell. You know, and, and that extends to the, to the narrative. You know, the the the, the, the player's character is, is not a hero, right? Uh, he's a survivor. He's, he's a survivor, <laughs> yeah. And and he's actually also a very deeply flawed, you know, human being. Um, and so we you know we try to get into that sort of thing as well. Without once again, without that, it's, it's not. You know, I wouldn't say he's like a regular guy. Like he has he has specific qualities and mm -hmm. his personality is is, is, um, is yeah, about his, his, his sort of, yeah, it's the way his outlook on life that maybe help mm -hmm. him survive. Mm -hmm. But he's not he's not a hero. He's a villain, but he's not. He's not a traditional movie star hero. No, he's not. And and, and this is another thing that caught my attention because because you see that the, the main character is, is at the same time he, he's fighting himself and the yeah. situation, and and he's sort of like the the villain and the good guy as you mentioned at the same time. And and this is really well balanced how you guys did it. So it, it was pretty cool to see it. Yeah, I mean, once again, like. Huge part of that is the voice actor. You know, Who, who's Madison. the voice actor that, that does? His name is Jeff Mattis. This is his first video game role. Really? Uh, but he yeah. did movies already. What's that? Is he in any movies or, or theaters? Or no, 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 no. He's a friend of a friend. Uh, I mean, wow. he literally years ago when I when I before anything was written, you know, I just asked people to I just explained what we were looking for in a very basic sense, and. Uh, he was literally the first person I talked to. Uh, I talked to him on the phone. I mean, this is going out, it must be three years ago, maybe more. And, and right away, I was like, oh, okay, you know. He sent me a reel where he was doing all these voices like uh, uh, Hillbilly and, and, you know, British Wizard and, you know, Schoolboy and all these things. And I was like, and then I actually talked to him on the phone with his normal voice. So I was like, that's it, that's perfect, it's absolutely perfect, you know. 
And don't so, don't like, do impressions, just be yourself, right? Yeah, just completely be yourself. I mean, obviously we sort of changed the, the as the character developed, we changed sort of the tone, but that's his voice. That's how he speaks. You know, he's the one thing to notice, he's much more pleasant, like friendly, like um, he's not so somber, but like, um, there would be times where, you know, as I was just getting to know him, I was like, oh, you know, where are you born? And, you know, he went this, this thing where he's talking about, like, oh, you know, I moved around from place to place, and my folks did this, and that. I was like, I wish I'd recorded that. It was perfect. You know, it's just like, yeah. So, um, you know, and to be perfectly honest, like, we, you know, because all, all my colleagues are French, you know, it's like, I've made a big point. Like, I would have loved to found, found somebody, obviously we knew we had to record in English, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I would have loved to found somebody who was speaking English with an accent. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Like, like the, the idea in my head is the actor Jean Reno. Okay. Right? You know, because like, why do they have to be speaking English? They don't. It doesn't mean that. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I would have loved to found like a, 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 you know, an Iraqi guy speaking in English, for example. Or a you Brazilian I mean? guy speaking English. Or a Brazilian guy speaking English, right? And then, but you know, like what was interesting is like you know. Well, if you want to work in another game, you'd know where to find me, David. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just got to warn you that game development doesn't pay very well. But you know what I'm saying? So like we, you know, that I was like, I would have loved to find one of those things, but then as soon as I talked to Jeff, I was like, all right, well, you know, this search is over. You like you're you are absolutely uh, perfect. And then it as it turned out, you know, he was willing to not just give us a lot of his time because a lot of the lines, like he would I would write them, we would discuss them, he would go, he had a sort of home recording booth set up in his closet. Mm -hmm. He would go off and record each line five times, then he would email it to me, and then we would listen to it together. And like, we did this, like, not every day, but like through over the course of years, like many, many times. Mm -hmm. um, as well as like getting into an actual studio where he read with the other voice actor, who's also fantastic. Okay. Uh, uh, so, but yeah, you know, so we, we have hundreds of hours of, of, of dialogue. You know, shaved it down to like, what, 20 minutes is in the game, maybe, maybe 30 minutes of VO altogether. Yeah, um, but you know, as you know, there's there's actually quite a bit more, you know, after the game as well. And I think this this is also very cool what we see nowadays because you said that that a part of the team, the developers that started it, they are in France. Yeah, um, you're in Hawaii, right? Well, I'm in, I'm in Hawaii at the moment, but no, I'm actually okay. normally in California. Oh, okay, California. So it's the French Californian, and the voice actor was probably somewhere else. And I mean, yeah, he was in LA. Yeah, I mean, I was in a different. Yeah, he was in a different city in California. Yeah. Um, and then everyone in France was in different towns too. Uh, so we, we only got together and then they got together a couple times a year and then I would see them all maybe once or twice a year. Either they would come over for a game uh, event like uh, the Game Developers Conference or E3 or I went over there a couple times. But okay. um, by and large, it was a, a remote project. So. Oh, this Which is... Is, is a large part of, you know, it took a long time to make this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it took a little too long and like, but you know, I, all excuses aside, I think a large part of it was just not being able to collaborate in the same room, you know. Yeah, I imagine right. that, that can make things a little bit harder, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just not easy, you know. Cool. Making video games not easy anyway, but yeah, that was just an extra challenge. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> and playing it is not easy either, because it right. takes a lot of time. And actually, I got stuck in one level so yeah. long. I mean, that yeah. killed me. And it, this is... Uh, Okay, I'm going to try not to spoil it by describing it, but it's after... Uh, I know. Uh, after it's, it's the level where you're, where you're out, stranded in the abyss, and you literally have no, way, no exactly. idea where to go. Yeah. Exactly, and, and, and everything around you wants to kill you, and yeah. manages to kill you. And, and I actually, uh, once I finished the game, I came back to that level, and I tried... I got so lost and I was very good at, at underwater orientation. I mean, this mm -hmm. was one of my specialties when I, I, I almost never got lost underwater. And I mm -hmm. tried to map that area by, by walking around and I'm still lost. I mean, right. I don't know what you guys did in that map, but it's a complete maze. That was, that was like a bit of a gamble. Um, and that's definitely like the most controversial. Uh, that's, the, that's the part that I think a lot of people criticize more than others, you know? I mean, the, the tricky thing with that level is we knew we wanted to have something that really conveyed this sense of totally being isolated and disoriented and um, almost hopeless, right? Because, you know, as you know, the game is it's largely a very linear experience. You know, there's a couple yes. times where you sort of do multiple objectives or do things, but, you know, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. 
Um, well, if that and, was the goal on that level, you guys nail it. Because I mean, right. I, I was lost, I was frustrated, I was afraid. Uh, I... <laughs> For some people, the problem I think though is that some people, a lot, many people, got really frustrated. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and uh, they um, just dropped it, right? <laughs> yeah, because it comes out of nowhere, and and you know, narratively, like it makes sense at that point. But it was that 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 level was a very hard level to. And once again, this is not this is not my area. I mean, I, I can't. I can take neither responsibility or, or guilt, but like, uh, criticism. But like, okay. Um, so I it's like it's hard. Friend. It's hard to get it just right. You know what I mean? Because like, you want to create the sense of directionlessness, you know, lack of direction. At the same time, you want people to get past it, right? So, yes. fortunately, most people did. And you know what's interesting is we watched some, um, you know, videos, and some some people literally just got it on their first try. You know. They just they just stumbled across it and so they had no problem. They're like, oh yeah, you know, that wasn't that hard. But if they'd gone back and tried to do it again, they might not have been able to, right? No. So I mean, what, was, what killed was, me was actually I, I found that the the sub and which yeah. gives a certain level of orientation where you have to go. So it's, you find and you say, okay, I, I should be here and I should go somewhere else. Yeah. And and then before you walk a little bit and there's an entrance where you have to go. Uh, it's like a cave where you go in and. Yep. And once I saw that cave, I saw, oh, this place looks really like it's going to kill me. There's no way I'm get, getting in there. You turn around and leave. <laughs> so I turned yeah. around and tried to find another place. And, and also, I don't know if it was a glitch or a game design or something like that. Because when I was inside the sub and I looked out of the window, it looked like a blue light was like blinking. Yeah. And that's, it's, not, that's not a glitch. That's there. Yeah. And, and I said, this is where I have to go. But I just couldn't get there in a straight line, and, and I was yeah. and I was trying to get there by all different means, and I was dying, and 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 this was actually killed me because. But I knew this is where I had to go, but I yeah. just couldn't get there. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it, it, I, like I said, you know, some people were kind of unhappy with it, but it's like it was definitely important to us to um, change up change up the scenario a little bit. I think it was a, a bold and very good call on you guys. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, there, there's so many other things I wanted to talk, but I would spoil the game, so I'm not gonna get into that. Okay. And I actually want to ask, uh, what are you, are you guys finished the games? Are you satisfied with the results, uh, both critic, commercially, and 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 sales wise? Is the studio happy? Are you guys working on something else? Uh, okay, that's a lot of questions. So um, currently, no, we're not really working on anything else. Uh, most of the team has actually sort of moved on to other projects. Okay. Uh, just because it's um, the, the this one took a lot longer than we originally anticipated. You know, like there are trailers out there saying it's coming in 2015, and then 2016, and then 2017, and so that was pretty exhausting for you mm -hmm. know, a lot of us. Um, <clears throat> critically, the reception has been really, by and large, very positive. Um, I think about as as good as we could have hoped for. It's okay. been really, it's been really encouraging. I mean, you know, as with all things internet, right? Like you, you oh, yeah. with things, you know, probably like, so there's a lot of people like this is the most boring game I've ever played. You know, it's like a walking simulator, blah blah. blah you know, um, and those are, I guess, valid criticisms. But at the same time, there there are a lot of people who are like, this game does things that I've, you know I've never experienced in a game. You know, and I think the other thing that's been really interesting is is um, you know I've watched a lot of streams on Twitch and, and YouTube and stuff like that. And, I've seen more than a couple of people, you know, literally brought to tears at the end of the game. Uh, they're literally just like, you know, they're not sobbing, you know what I mean? But they're they're weeping, you know, they're reaching over their their their, their Kleenex, and like that is genuine. And so, like, if we if I could have known that like one person in the world like felt that way about the game, like that's pretty, you know, that's pretty incredible already. But like having seen multiple people do it, um, we've gotten some emails and letters. Like, um, I, I actually forgot about this until recently. I got I got an email. Or we got an email. Uh, from this guy, he was, he was like, I'm really ashamed to admit that, you know, I haven't played your game because I can't afford to buy the game, but I watched someone else play it on YouTube and I uh -huh. was like devastated at the end. And he wrote this, you know, really long emails explaining how he felt and like how like how much it moved him. Um, and I think part of that is because people are expecting it to be a horror game. They're expecting it to be they're not really expect to have any of those emotional buttons triggered, and, and then so you know the ones who stick it through the end are really genuinely surprised. Mm -hmm. So 
that's not necessarily a critical option, but you know the reviews you've gotten are by and large very, you know, very fair. I mean, you know, the game is short, Great. the game is very uneven, you know. Oh, it's, uh, a perfect, it's a perfect length for me. If you're yeah, me too. But like a lot of people, that's not you know they, they view it sort of a dollar to hour ratio, you know. Ah, oh, this, this is the worst comparison people can make. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, I played a lot of very short games that that are amazing. I mean, your game, I mean, it took me like six, seven hours. It's okay. Right. Uh, I can remember another game that I enjoyed a lot that is very short. It's an indie game. It's it's horror also. It's called The Park. I don't know if you played it. Yeah, I, I know of it. I haven't played it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, you know uh, this game Journey. Yeah. It was Journey short. You know, I, I wouldn't want it to be any longer. It's phenomenal. Um, or, or Inside or Limbo. Limbo, or, yeah. Or yes. Little Nightmares recently came out. It's very short. Yeah. Also short game and very good. I mean, it, it, for me, it's all about the story. I mean that's why I, I don't like survival games because I, I think it's it's there, there's no story behind it. People say, "Oh, you right. make your own story." Yeah. I said, "I don't want to make my own story. I want to I want to live <laughs> impressive stories from other people. I mean, there there are a lot of very creative people out there. I want to live their stories." Sure. Um, so you guys uh, are now working on something else. I was so thrilled to that you would tell me that you. No, game coming I mean, out. No, not, I mean, everyone's working on something else, right? But no, we're not really. I mean, I don't think Honor Code right now is not currently working on anything else. Oh, um, like personally, like I'm, I'm sort of just like there's a lot of sort of winding down this process of still just trying to get the game out there and trying to get people to um. Build Are you working on a new game script or something like that so that we can watch or expect? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Um, I mean, right now I'm sort of more in like. I guess PR mode, you know what I mean? Like, I've been talking to people like you and, and um, okay. really just trying to reach out to, uh, uh, trying to help the game reach a wider audience. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's it's uh, it's pretty, like, you know, there are a lot of games out there and you're competing for, you know, for a very, for very valuable and, yeah. amount of time, you know? So, like, we're really just trying to do what we can to, because, once again, like, we do have the conviction, like, we feel like that, if more people can reach to get in the play the game like yourself, you know, this can make a meaningful impression on you know. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can build up the resources to make another game. You know. Yes, count, count me in. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I think one thing I would say is like, if if we were to make another game, you know, I I don't think it would necessarily probably wouldn't be a horror game. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily be a first person game. You know, like mm -hmm. it wasn't like the goal was to create the ultimate first person indie horror game. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. That's just not. That's that's generally I don't think how you should appreciate an approach that uh, approach mm -hmm. the creative process right you know mm -hmm. uh, and so like you know like a lot of people are like oh you know I'd love to see a sequel which is so what? funny because we're like, you know, why would you want to see a sequel to this game you know it's how, like what, how you know? can you make a sweet sequel of this yeah game? exactly you can't make a sequel you know fundamentally but also it's like you know the the things that people really enjoyed about they probably wouldn't enjoy a second time around right yeah you know there's always there's always this balance between people say they want something new, but if you give them something new, you know, uh, um, maybe they're like, oh, this is like, you know, it's, it's too different, you know, and if you give them something that's too similar, they're like, oh, they can, you know, it's, yeah. you know, so, um, if, if, if and when we do have a chance to make another game, it will probably be something completely different, you know, like, I don't think it'll have anything to do with the water, necessarily, you know, because it's probably a first-person horror game, it might not be narrative-driven, you know, mm -hmm. um, so well, yeah, I, I sorry, sorry, sorry to give you so so few good answers, but okay. Uh, another thing I read is that uh, on I think on PS4 and on PC you can play this game on VR, right? Um, it's not actually available for PS4 right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we just didn't have the resources to do it, um, and and you know that was really unfortunate. I mean, once again, the game was in development for so long that we didn't. I mean, when we started the game, VR wasn't even around. The Oculus mm -hmm. Kickstarter hadn't even happened yet. <laughs> You know, so yeah. um, the game does work uh, very well in VR. You can play it on Oculus. You can play it on Vive. Um, hopefully, someday down the line, we'll have it on PSVR as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, one of the things we we try to make we try to make it very clear uh, was that you know the game was not designed with VR in mind. And, and no, it's, you know, it's, I think it's VR would be a bonus for this game. I mean, yeah, it's an extra layer of immersion, and it works. Yeah. It works incredibly well. I mean, for some people, it's too much. I mean, it's, did you try it out with VR? Have I? Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, many times, um, and we all have, and because we had to test the game in VR, right? Okay. Um, and and it's 
you know, once again, you put the goggles on, you put something over your ears, and that, once again, you were playing with a scuba mask. And, you know, yeah. But it, it definitely adds that sense of intensity. Um, but, yeah, so it's, it's definitely sort of, like, recommended, but it's not required. And, you know, none of the game design was, mo almost all of the sort of key features and, and ideas were implemented that are in the game that's out right now were prior to even us being aware of VR. You know, mm -hmm. There's literally just an extra layer of... of immersion. Yeah, I can't imagine that playing that game in VR must be another totally different experience, but... Yeah, but I mean, for some people it's too much. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's yeah. just too intense. Um, uh, yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, even playing without VR, I mean, okay, I, I did create a whole environment around me, but there are some, I wouldn't call them jump scares, but when I got attacked by some of the of the animals and I didn't expect, and and the real funny thing is that I was really heavily heavily just the same as my character was. I mean, that, we hear that a lot. Yeah, the, the yeah. breathing, yeah. the status thing that that really works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people said that they 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 felt the same way that they're they, they're breathing unconsciously, you know, uh, sort of ended up matching the characters, and that was cool. I mean, that was not, once again that's not what we intended, but it's it, in it's not surprising that some people would feel that way. Cool, sense. nail it. Now, David, tell me a little bit about you. I mean, you're in California. You write uh, scripts for video games. Uh, what else do you do? Um, this is actually the first script. I know you a little better too. <laughs> yeah, um, this is actually the first script I wrote. Uh, but you know, on really? my own. Wow. Oh, no, no, I shouldn't say. I mean, I had a lot of help. You know, um, but that I, I primarily wrote on my own. Um, but I've actually worked as a, a script editor for mm -hmm. quite a long time. Um, you know, most mostly independent games. Um, but then I, I, the one that most people would have heard of is the the Metal Gear series. Yes. And, did you play Metal Gear? Are you Metal Gear? Yeah, I'm not a big fan, but everybody who plays video games knows knows about right. Metal Gear. <laughs> right. So, so I did. The, I'm not a I huge Gears of War fan. I mean, this this Gears. is my thing. <laughs> You're a huge Gears of War fan. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so basically, what I would do is for the English language script for the Metal Gear games, you know, I would I would they would send it to me, and I would try to do my best to sort of not actually not clean it up, but make it make it dirt. Rough it up and make the edges a little more rougher, you know, because it was okay. oftentimes the translation was so sort of precise that it was very clinical sounding and very, you know, not American, not American sounding, basically. Okay. A bunch of American characters, you know, or mm -hmm. and, and um, or you know, English voice actors. Uh, so I did that for like I think eight or nine of their games, um, wow. which was, uh, you know, I think definitely gave me a good sort of a really good experience in sort of like trying to be economical with words. Okay. Metal Gear is, is, is an incredible franchise, but it's definitely known for being a little too a little verbose, you know, and so I, within the constraints I had, I had to really work to trying to shave it down and trying okay. to make it feel a little more natural. Okay. Think, uh, so did, did you get the, the already the American script or did they gave you the original script to compare it? No, no, I mean, you know, the scripts are huge, so they would, they would, they would send, uh, they would have the Japanese script localized by like a, a large agency, you know, multiple people translating it and then they okay. would send me the results and then I would, I would sort of take a pen to it and try to take out as much stuff as I could, you know. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the main thing we've been doing for the last couple of years. I mean, this, this last couple of years everything's been about narcosis and so just by virtue of being in the U.S. and, and also just some of the background I had, I, I ended up doing a lot of sort of business development and PR, you know, working with, you know, websites mm -hmm. and streamers and podcasters and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. As well as working with the people at Oculus and people at Microsoft and people at NVIDIA. Um, because I actually, prior to that, I had a uh, background in business development and games. Mm -hmm. So I used to work with a couple of independent developers, you know. Cool. Uh, Anywhere? Trying to find tools and trying to find resources and stuff like that. So. Anyone we might heard about? No, I don't think so. It was, it was a large company, but, but not particularly glamorous one. It's called Foundation Nine. Okay. It was like a, a collection of eight studios sort of around the world. Um, but nothing, nothing too sexy. Okay. It was, it was cool. It was great. It was a great company, but like, yeah, nothing, nothing like, it wasn't like, yeah, I was cool. doing it for, for Epic, for example. Cool. So what you do in your free time when you're not doing video games, if you actually have free time, cause I know this industry is very <laughs> hard on yeah. people. Yeah. I mean, the same thing as anyone, you know, like, I mean, last, last 
last year, all of last year, and even the beginning of this year, there was zero free time. Um, you know, I, I barely played any video. I think the only video game I played last year was uh, Inside. You know, I mean, that's exaggerating a little bit. Okay. Like, so there, there was no there was no there was no weekends all last year and, and wow. in this year. Um, and then you know, also once the game is out, you it's not over, right? I mean, you you need to work very hard to sort of once again just get the word out and keep get people excited about it and, and respond to people who are excited about it. And plead with them to share it with their friends, you know. Um, cool. But um, I, I mean, I guess this this recently I've been I've been traveling a little bit, so that's been cool. I've been trying. I guess I've been trying to get back to like normal life, but like trying to read books, you know, trying to actually make my own meals as opposed to getting takeout. You know, trying to get some little bit of exercise. I think. Oh wow! If you, if you, if you work with scripts, you have to read a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. Also, and also, well, also think of like I think the main thing is trying to find things to do that don't involve looking at a screen. Mm -hmm. you know? Right, like being outside or reading a book. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> Are you into comics? I, I haven't, and I, I was when I was really young. I. I um, I would say like I, I enjoy them and I appreciate them very much, but I don't say I read them regularly. I mean, I have read a couple recently. Well, why do you ask? Because there's there some people in the blog that are really into comics, and there's this huge discussion about Marvel versus DC, both on the big screen and on comics. And this is a discussion that in our podcast always comes up. I mean, who's right. Batman? I mean, I Batman, <laughs> Superman, or I don't know. So. Yeah, well, like, like I mean, yeah. So I, I don't think I, think I have much to add to the conversation, but like, you know, I remember, I remember when uh, Frank Miller's Dark Knight came out. Mm -hmm. to me? Because prior to that, I thought Marvel was much cooler. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not into DC, and I don't like Batman. I think he's a spoiled brat, and that was raised by by his butler. And right, right. That, that always creates a huge discussion because everybody likes Batman. I'm the exception to the rule. <laughs> Well, it's okay to like. It's like okay to like different things. Um, I mean, I read. I was really into Sandman when it came out. Once again, like I, you know, that's, I was reading comics when, when that started. Yeah, and I went, recently Sandman's went back and read the. I guess the sequel, the one he just did a couple years ago. That was cool. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't. I don't. I don't consume nearly enough comics to like say you know. Like I mean, certainly as far as the movies go, I've seen a couple of the DC ones. that are pretty awful. You know. Yes, I, think, I agree. Have I you think, seen Wonder Woman? Yeah, that was that was very good. I enjoyed that very much. I, uh, I, I missed it. That's the only DC movie that people say it's good, and I actually missed it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's too long at the end, but it's 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 much. It's it, you know because like the thing is like um. I mean, I sort of half watched that Batman versus Superman movie, just not even really paying attention, you know. But like, you know, I think the only the closest thing they have in that movie to a joke is like when Batman says like shit. Right? It's supposed to be sort of dry humor, I'm like you know. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think comic books are for kids, but I think, you know, if like if you can't have a little bit more humor or liveliness or you know, like like I think a lot of the Marvel movies. Once again, I haven't seen them all, but like mm -hmm. they they are getting to be a point where they're very formulaic, but their formula is very good. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they're like, oh, hire a good writer, hire great actors. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. have great action balanced with like. Good sense of humor. Good interaction. Yeah, it's like you know th these are not like these are not like Sundance quality like movies about the human condition, but at least they have some level of humanity. Yeah, yeah it's definitely lacking at least in the DC stuff. You know, it's just mm -hmm. stuff. They feel like trailers and music videos, not not like stories. Okay. Right? So yeah, we'll see how long Marvel can keep doing this. I mean, oh, then I guess, they they've been it's hauling just, for a long time on that train. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you know, but like even like I said, it is formulaic. But wow, they do it quite well, you know. Um, I think you know, it, it, it'll be interesting to see how they take how, what they do with Star Wars as well, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. like, do you like Star Wars? Like, what's that? Do you like Star Wars? Yeah, I, mean, I grew up with Star Wars, you know. So like, I don't, I don't think I had a choice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not. It wasn't really. It's like, I'm actually wearing a Star Wars shirt today. So we were just talking about comics right now, and and David, you told me that you guys uh, in, in the game, the the whole yeah. plot is uh, the survivor of the whole in incident that happened is telling his story oh. about uh, what happened to him, and he wrote a book about it, and he's talking about it in, in a radio show, and, and you just told me right now that you guys actually uh. wrote the book about his story. Yeah, hold on. There's a phone ringing in the background. Let me. 
Okay. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it, it's really tough to talk about without giving away lots of lots of aspects of the game, but um, you know, basically, the the game is about um, this guy's this guy's you know the six or seven hours this guy spends the, you know trapped at the bottom of the ocean and sort of things he has to do to survive, right? Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the premise of the game. Um, and we really try to treat it like a, a real life incident, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, not like a like a large scale catastrophe like 9/11, but like you know something more like you know really it's the worst possible you know like a like like, rise of deep water incident or something. Like okay, that, right? or like like so that. Panic failure leads to you know serious problems, and you know these people. This is how these people survive. Like that and movie so, where the guy, I uh, think, 127 hours, where the guy got stuck with his arm and he had to cut exactly. his arm off. Okay. That's exactly right. No, that's actually, you know, those there's there's these nonfiction books about people surviving extraordinary circumstances. So yeah, um, between a rock and a hard place, the turn of the movie, 127 hours, uh, into thin air. Uh, you know, um, there's one mm -hmm. called Touching the Void about two mountain climbers. You know, basically one. Gave the other one up for dead because he fell down like you know a half mile chasm and the guy crawled you know for a couple of days out of the mountains you know stuff like that mm -hmm. and um, and what makes those books so fascinating or that 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 genre of literature so fascinating is that a because you know it's real that inherently makes it much more interesting right mm -hmm. and b you know we're earlier we we're talking about spoiling the end of the story it's like you you know the end of the story because the guy wrote the book you know he survived yeah. right or for that matter oh you know hey have you, you know, seen the movie about the guy who cut off his own arm to you know escape from being trapped under rocks like yeah. knowing if he, that if he didn't aspect survive not... he couldn't tell the story and there wouldn't be a yeah. book or a movie right <laughs> yeah it's still the book is fascinating it's still the movie is fascinating because it's not just about that one particular moment right mm -hmm. and it's not about did he survive or not um, you know you know the answer to that and so the, the question is a is how did he survive and this, so once again this really affected how we try to tell the story of the game but also what was going through his mind mm -hmm. when this experience was happening, right? Because when people are faced with their own mortal mortality, you know, inevitably, obviously, they think about things that brought them to that path, you know, paths mm -hmm. brought them to that point, or they think about their family, or they think about regrets. Um, and so those are aspects, you know, we try to, you know, touch on those things in the game's narrative. Um, once again, I'm trying to speak about this without spoiling it. You know? mm -hmm. But like you know, you'll know there's there's like there's moments in the game where you know the, the narrator is really talking about a lot of it has to do with the situation at hand. Oh, here's what happened, or you know, here's how I felt and I was scared and you mm -hmm. know it was flooding or whatever. Uh, and other parts are used to deliver game information, like oh, you know, here's what I had to do this is my objective, right? But mm -hmm. other parts are you know intensely personal, right? And they yes. don't really have to do with the catastrophe. They don't have to do with how I survived, but they're these are things that were relevant to this person at that time. Right? Yeah, so there's, I, I don't know if you remember, there's a moment where he talks about, you know, we call it the swimming lesson, right? You know, mm -hmm. the sort of this traumatic memory of his childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and like when we wrote that, or, I, 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 I should say I wrote it, but you know, when I wrote it, it's like we didn't even really know how it was going to fit in with everything else. You know? mm -hmm. But then once we had Jeff read it, same thing, we had him read it on the phone and like, mm -hmm. we're like, okay, this is pretty awesome. You know what I mean? Now you could take that whole thing out of the game and it wouldn't affect the story. Mm -hmm. But once again, it's like, like we were talking about earlier, the, it's the journey, not the destination, right? Yeah, I, I remember one part that really touched me is uh, I can still remember, I have the scene of, of the game in my mind, but is when he's talking about the suit, uh, he yeah. calls it a walking coffin, yeah. and he yeah. said, well, the, the suit is designed to keep me alive, yeah. and, and this is good, but also bad, because if I give up, there's no way yeah. I can kill myself, or, or he yeah. talks yeah. something about this. Yeah. Yeah, we we had tons of other lines because like, you know we we went down all these different paths like oh, um, you know he could detail the ways he might try to kill himself you know mm -hmm. and talk about the frustration of it but you know we cut a lot of that stuff out but like once again like the, the yeah the walking coffin thing is something we came up with in, in an interview with the website we just, we just came up with it in conversation but it clicked you know it's like it's such a great it's such a mm -hmm. powerful image and. Uh, you know, it, it's it's so effective, and so like you know, we definitely we definitely latched onto that. Um, but like you know, another thing like it's another like line of dialogue that I really I wanted to keep in for so long, but there's just no way to get it in there that felt natural. It's like it's a nightmare. The whole the whole idea is you're living this nightmare because you can't rub your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. 
you're in the suit. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't you can't touch your own face. You can't pick your nose. You know you can't scratch. <laughs> you can't scratch your neck. You know. Hopefully uh, you don't get a scratch in, in your nose. Like you're like ah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and like that's 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 nightmare scenario right there. Right? Yeah. You know, oh yeah, you're gonna live another ten hours down here, live another twenty hours down here, but you can't you can't sit down, right? Yeah. Um, you you can't, that you can't. Damn scratch in your knee, and you can't touch it, right? <laughs> yeah, and then we had an idea that you know at one point you know there's a there's a collision, you would get injured, and so like you would be aware that you had like a broken, whatever femur or something like that you know all these things we cut out there's they, they too distracting but mm -hmm. but we definitely and so yeah all those you know it's cool like, to hear because it seems like these things are you know, they definitely clicked with you you know I mean, a lot of people they hear the words they don't really care either you know like oh, yeah, was, you know, oh no it did but you you, you said you guys actually wrote the book about the story of the survivor yeah it's, it's his account of the experience right? okay and, and so you, i can buy it on amazon you can buy it on Amazon, yeah, you know, <laughs> and like we, we what, it's funny because we, what's the book called? I, I'm, I'm, I'm Googling it right now. <laughs> it's called, um, it's called Hell or High Water, okay. Surviving Ocean Nova, uh, and we worked with, I'm going to um, put the link in the description below because I'm going to, yeah, that'd be cool, book. yeah, um, we didn't, and, and to be clear, you know, we didn't write the book, uh, well, we were still really expecting to make money off of it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And we didn't even mean it to be like sort of a marketing tool. It was really because as we kept trying to – game development is very uh, complex and you're constantly moving things around, right? And like, you know, rearranging, oh, this level got cut out or, oh, this level, you know, is going to come in before this level as opposed to after this level. And so we literally the, – the, our game director, Content, you know, his idea was like, you know, since we're having so much trouble – keeping these narrative threads straight, why don't we actually just write the book, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which seemed like a ridiculous idea at the time, but it turned out to be a great idea. Well, wow, because um, you, you, you designed the whole story and then you just <laughs> pick the parts that you want to fit into the game, right? Yeah. Oh, and so you're here. Yeah. And, kind of, um, kind of makes sense. and so, yes, it's a whole book and it's, 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 you know, just like the game, it's treated like nonfiction. You know what I mean? This is this, like, you know, this catastrophe, the Oshinobi incident, it's the kind of thing everyone would know about because, you know, it would have been like, uh, it would have been like you know, oh the, the you know the fire that broke out of the Tesla car factory, or yeah, the Horizon deep water thing, you know, or or you know the um, some astronaut landing that went right, you know, like mm -hmm. it's an incident that everyone knows about, so everyone's fascinated by it, mm -hmm. um, and especially because there was a survivor. Right? So once again, you know, well, game, somebody so, has to be alive to tell the story, right? <laughs> somebody has to tell the story, right? And so then, you know, as you know. Uh, what becomes interesting is there's the story that you're seeing and experiencing as the player, and then there's the story you're hearing uh, in the past tense, you know, uh, as someone relating this experience, and it's how those things intertwine or, you know, diverge. Like, that's where the story gets really interesting. You know? So, like, there's, there's these different levels. There's what you can read, there's what you can hear, there's what you can see and experience yourself, and those things, um, you know, I, I, think, I think that the most interesting part is when those things really start to unravel exactly this is this is what i felt i mean uh, there, there's some bits and parts that you see along the game and, and 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 then everything just gets together at the end and makes complete sense yeah, yeah. uh another just another aspect of the game that i wanted to, to touch about uh is it, although it's a first person game there are mm -hmm. some platforming elements where you have to mm -hmm. jump around which, mm -hmm. which is not something very common to see when you're playing it as a first person. I mean, jumping around, falling down platforms. I mean, yeah. this, this was also, in my opinion, a bold design decision because it's very unusual to see. Yeah, it's funny. I think that's one of those things we didn't quite realize. See, this is the problem with making anything is you're so close to it, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, we, we didn't find those things to be very hard, you know what I mean? But like some people found them really frustrating and like, you know, they're, they're those are really a big problem for not a lot, but some people, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's like, that's just the thing where if you're a tiny team and you don't have the resources to do like wide scale play testing and also the game was being made up until the last minute. So it wasn't ever like we could like, mm -hmm. let's, let's have some, let's have 50 people play test this game and then we'll spend the next six months adjusting. It just wasn't possible. Right. Uh -huh. And so, um, I think I don't want to say it caught us by surprise, but it was, you know, it was it was interesting that that a lot of people weren't happy with that because like for us, 
you don't even think about it anymore, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No, well, you're, I imagine. I mean, you, you've been through the game and the design, and you have the whole picture of, of the thing. So it's it's probably second nature for you. But we, yeah, as, it's just hard to put yourself in a new player's shoes. Yeah, right? as as being the first time there. I mean, I, I had I had trouble in one of these parts where I kept falling down and I couldn't jump this huge gap. Yep. And the reason I couldn't jump because you shouldn't jump there because then I I decided to look left and I said, oh, here's the exit. I, I should I shouldn't go straight, <laughs> yeah. and and it made perfect sense for me because again I, I relate very easily to the game because I, I I I've been scuba diving I've dived a lot I did some wreck diving, and and sometimes you're in a place and you can't get out and and you're yeah. you're sort of trapped and the exit is right beside you and you just can't see it. Yeah. Especially when yeah. I, when I went uh, night diving, which is in my opinion the most fun of it. And, sure. and sometimes you just pass right next to something and people say, oh, did you see that huge shell rock or whatever? And you said, no. And he said, well, you just passed right by it and you didn't see it. And, and this is sort of things that in, in diving really happen and you guys really captured perfectly. Yeah, I mean, because, because your senses are, are, some of your senses are, are cut off, right? Or restricted, right? You know, yeah. sense of smell and your sense of um, hearing. You know what I mean? You can't hear the way the wind shifts and there's a tunnel next to you, right? So you just hear one thing, you know? Yeah. So. Especially because you have the, the, the whole gear around you. Usually I have the, the hood and, and, and gloves and all of that. So even yeah. your, your, your sense of, of, of touch is off, which yeah. in this game is also because, as you said, you can't scratch your nose. You're inside yeah. a suit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm going to look for this book. I mean, got really interested in it. And you said yeah, it's, yeah, it's classified yeah. as non-fiction? Because it's, right. it's a word, of, but it is a work of fiction, right? It, it's a work of fiction. Oh, yeah, that's the other funny thing is there are some people who mostly is like comments on YouTube and stuff, like, you know, who, who actually said, wait, is this based on a true story? <laughs> which is, the which reason is, why I can tell you it's not based on a true story is because you guys chose natural people to show in pictures. Because I, I want... <laughs> I once read that when you see a picture, uh, a motion picture, and it says based on a true story, you know that it's what sort of happened, but right. with with less attractive people. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it doesn't have Mark Wahlberg as the, as the star, yeah. Yeah. Um, or yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and you should you should check out the book. You know, it's 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 a complete book. It's like, I think it's 110 pages or something like that. You know. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah g- g- definitely gonna look for it. Definitely. And so, when you played the game, you played it in English. Yes. Right? Did you play it with the subtitles on or off? Uh, on, and it's probably it was it was in English. Right. Because right. you, usually I play with with uh, audio in Portuguese or subtitles in Portuguese, but oh. I had just played Gears of War. I was, oh. and, and Gears is a game that I've been playing in English forever, so I, I changed the language in my console. And right. so, so I can't actually tell if, if the translation to Portuguese is good. Right. But I do plan to replay on it because I'll be playing with another perspective of the game now that I know how it ended. And yeah. then I'm going to turn Portuguese subtitles on. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope you do because I, I, I mean, I, I have no idea how the Portuguese subtitles are, but I think, I think. My understanding is they're quite good. You know, we um, it was very important to me personally to try to bring the game to as many languages as possible because you know, from for me and from my perspective, the the story and the nuances of the storytelling are so important. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not like once again, it's, it's just trying to tell a slightly more unconventional or subtle or sophisticated story than like oh, you know, all we have to do is collect these twelve demon stones and then we can, you know, banish this ancient evil, blah, 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 you know, or like, you know, I need the, where's the shotgun or whatever. Um, and so it was pretty cool that, you know, I found these various people who, and the main thing was to get them excited about the story first. Yeah. They were trying to do the thing, it's very unconventional, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and, and a lot of them were like very surprised. I'm like, here's the script, and like, this isn't a video game script, you know, like, exactly, it's not a video game script, you know, you're, you're basically, you're, you're hearing a conversation, you know. And, yeah, um, it's, it's p- people talking like we're doing right now, but exactly, yeah. Um, and so, one of them so, was trapped five thousand meters below the the sea surface, <laughs> and, but now they're they're not, you know. And yeah. um, 
so so yeah, it would be cool to get your thoughts on the, the Brazilian Portuguese translation because uh, Mauricio is one of the guys who offered to do that. He, I think he did. He's great to work with. Okay. Um, and yeah, we I think we localized into a total of thirteen languages. Wow. Uh, that this is a lot for gaming because usually it's a lot for a game. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, um, and and what was really cool is we had some people approach us after launch and like, hey, I, I really love your game and I love the story, and I would like to help you know bring it to a wider audience. You know? So like, once again, I can't I I can't speak any of those languages or read any of those languages. So I don't know how good they are, but you know I hope that I hope that. Um, by and large, people that seem to have been saying that the, the. But don't worry, I'll, I'll replay it definitely, and, and then I'll let you know what I thought about the translation. Cool, great. <clears throat> cool, great. That'll be awesome. So you never been to Brazil, right? Not yet. Not yet. I would like to though. Yet um, is the key word. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll give you a call so, when I do. Yeah, well, we do have in Brazil, and it's usually in October, a very big gaming show. It's the biggest yeah. gaming show in Latin America. It's called Brazil Game Show. It's like our uh -huh. E3. Right. And, well, if you guys want to come down, let me know. That would be fantastic. Yeah, we've had, I've, met, I've been fortunate to meet quite a few people from Brazil. Um, and like I think that's something I learned over the last couple of years. I mean, I, I knew the, the market and the audience for games is big there, but I don't think I realized quite how... Quite how, uh, how big of an impact games have done there. So yeah, it'd be cool. But uh, for me, the main thing would be come down, come down and eat. <laughs> yeah, like, go uh, to the beach. Do you surf? I don't surf, but I, I like hanging out at the beach, and um, and the Brazilian food that I have had, I do enjoy. I'm enjoy Panda queijo, panda queijo. Oh yeah, panda... my favorite food. Yeah, the, the yeah, it's like right. the best thing ever. Yes. yes, it is. It's my kryptonite. I mean, I can't get Actually, away from it. <laughs> one of the characters in our game is Brazilian. Actually. Uh, one of the bodies you find. Really? Yeah, her name oh, is I, I, Iris. I, I totally Iris. missed that. <laughs> yeah, Iris, Iris, I mean, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Iris Cirquera, Cirquera, Cirquera. Cirquera, yeah. yeah. Um, wow, can't believe and, I missed that. Yeah, it's funny because like when we, you know, so we wrote all these names and, and these words, right, but I, the one thing I never anticipated was I didn't realize that when people play games on YouTube that they just read everything aloud. And so we had all these names that were not really easy to pronounce because it didn't, like, because to me that was more authentic, right? You know, okay. than like John Smith or, or, you know, Tyler Miller or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like oh, we're going to have a Hispanic character in here, but you're going to be able to pronounce her name really easily. And so, yeah, like, Ira Sierra is not a name that most people can pronounce, but we never thought that we're going to be saying it out loud, so we thought it was fine, you know? Cool. So, <laughs> it was kind of funny, like, and fun. the same thing with um, a lot of those text items you, you find, it's like, they were meant to be read, not to be read aloud, you know? And so we actually had to go back and fix some of them because they were just, they are like tongue twisters, like, nobody speaks like this, you know? So we had to go back and, like... It just it was just funny like I was like oh like at first couple of weeks I was like cringing every time because I'd be trying to read these sentences and they're really sort of convoluted and complex and um, so we actually went back to simplify some of that stuff after the game came out cool. just to make it a little this more is, yeah so you guys had a lot of of surprise unexpected happy surprises with the game right yeah yeah a few yeah <clears throat> yeah I mean by and large it was uh, I mean it was definitely a very challenging experience but like. Once again, it, there are people who have reached out to us who we've seen where the game is really making a strong impression. Um, and once again, not necessarily for reasons they were expecting. You know, a lot of people are like, that game wasn't scary at all, but wow, it was awesome. You know what I mean? I mean, for, for me, it was a huge game. I mean, uh, uh, you mentioned Bioshock. I would put it in the same shelf for me as Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> I mean, wow, that okay. end... Yeah. Hopefully it's a compliment for you guys. Yeah, no, no. It's, it's, I mean, that's cool. Yes, I think it's a totally different scale and scope, but but I, I know it is. But I mean, the the impact that it had on me was this, this uh, at the same level. I mean, it's it, I can't express how much I like this game for you guys, and then, and it's such a pleasure to be talking to you. That I mean, you wrote, you you participated on the whole development. It's so good to hear that all that that internal insight and input about the game. I mean, th this is what actually is a lot of fun for me doing these interviews. I mean, I get to know very cool people that tell me a lot of info that I will never get from nowhere, nowhere else. And yeah. Yeah. It's, it's well, really I mean, thanks. I mean, thanks for having, thanks for having me. It's, it's cool to have an opportunity. Like we had to sit on so many of these secrets for so many years, right? 
And, and you know, I once imagine, again, even you knew how it ended, and you couldn't yeah, tell you know how it ends, and, 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 so, <laughs> and so it's nice to be able to talk about those things too. Yeah. How big is the development team? I mean, it's, it's um, there's like big, seven right? principal people. Uh, there's Kontan, who's the game director. Mm -hmm. Damian, who's our game designer. Um, we had two engineers, Emmerich and Robin. Um, I mean, it's like sort of 20 people, up. right? That is on. In the... No, no, really. I mean, there was a lot of people who helped out for uh, a couple of weeks, a couple of months at a time. Okay. Um, so it's those four. Um, and then uh, Benjamin, we had one artist, full time artist, who's amazing. His name is Benjamin. Um, and one audio guy, Adrian, uh, who's mm -hmm. also amazing. Uh, I worked with them very closely. Oh, the and audience then, uh, is great. I mean, the, the the sound of the ocean and the capture and and uh, it's. I mean, th this is why I was so amazed to know that none of you guys ever ever dived before. I mean, yeah, because <laughs> because yeah. the whole thing was so real for me. That's cool. Man. And there's not as many underwater games as it should be in the, out there. So yeah, well, I mean, I can definitely tell you, setting a game underwater has a lot of. Um, Brings a lot of challenges as far as game design wise, right? I can't imagine um, because because you can't just put a big pile of crates wherever you don't want people to go, or a wall, or a guardrail. You know, like you <laughs> yeah, have to right. Okay. right. It's a cave, you know, or it's, it's yeah. a tunnel. It's another cave. It's another you know field. Um, oh, really? Cool. So yeah, there's and then the other person who helped us out or was or a key part of the team is um, Edwin. He was the only other American on the team, um, and so he did all you know, all our QA and sort of production organization stuff near the end last mm -hmm. year. So, um, and then our voice actors, you know, but they weren't really like a part of the team per se. Mm -hmm. And then we yeah, hired, um, or, or oftentimes got favors from, you know, specialists in their fields, like, you know, Benjamin, our artist was incredible, but like, you know, animation was not a strong suit, so we had to go find someone who could actually do the animation. Make okay. Uh, but I mean, not, not many people knew how the game ended, right? Because maybe some of the people that worked didn't know the entire plot. And I yeah, I mean, it depends, it depends on whether they're curious. Holding on for that secret for like three, four years and not be able to tell and talk about it. Oh. Yeah, even now it's hard to talk about it, right? It's not. Yeah, because we something. don't want to spoil for the viewers, but we did talk before while I was not recording. And I mean, it must be such a relief to be able to talk and say, oh, yeah, you know what it ended? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like I said, it's cool that, that not just knowing how it ended, but that it, it's leaving an impression. It's definitely really. Really it did. rewarding. It did very much. Cool. Well, David, I I'm sorry to cut this interview short. Usually, I try to keep it under 40 minutes, and we've been over one hour. And yeah. <laughs> That's I a lot to talk. About. I, I could be talking for hours for you guys, with you right now. But uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it was amazing talking to you. Uh, please send my best to everybody from the team that you still are in touch because the work you guys did is, is great. I wish an enormous success for you guys for the game. Hopefully you guys can come down to Brazil as soon as possible and if you do give me a call. I will do that. Uh, thank you thank you so much for taking time to reach out. I know it took a while to set this up but it's been, uh, it's been really cool. It's nice talking to you. Yeah, I'll bring and you a back. Congratulations on your one year old too. I'm sorry? Conditions on your one year old as well. Thank you, thank you very much. And when you guys come down to Brazil, I'll be waiting with a big bag of Pão de Queijo for you guys. I will be ready. <laughs> okay, Christian, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. All right.